This week, I was supposed to digitize all of Dr. Martin's patient files. I was feeling good about my progress when I saw it. A second filing cabinet hiding behind the shelves that I'd never noticed before. Sighing with fatigue, I yanked open the first drawer. I plucked out a file from the A section and began to read. Aberdeen Carla. Alright Carla, let's see if you're in the system. I set the file on the desk, sat down at the computer, and typed in her name. Nothing came up. Oh hell no. I am not doing all the files in this cabinet. But I sighed. Opened a new patient file and began copying the data. Carla Aberdeen, date of birth 42472. 5976 pounds. Finally, I got to the doctor's notes. They were written in messy script. As if in a hurry. I put on my glasses and read. Complaints of eczema, itchiness after eating fruits. Lungs may be useful. I stopped and reread the last line. Lungs may be useful. I shrugged, figuring it was some sort of mistake or reference to something. I typed it into the computer and took the next file from the cabinet, a Mr. David Akowski. But the doctor's notes were even stranger this time. Family history of heart attacks, large skin surface area. I typed him into the system and stared at the screen. Large skin surface area, what does that even mean? When I got to the next one, a Miss Katrina Allenson, I felt the knot in my stomach tighten. History of work stress and anxiety. Recent panic attack. Feet are perfect size. I rolled away from the computer, heart pounding. I picked up the file and studied it. There must be an explanation, but I couldn't think of any. I took a deep breath, then I picked up the phone and dialed the number on Katrina's file. But what will I say? I don't even know. I just had a terrible, nagging feeling and wanted to do something about it, but I wasn't in luck. Beep, beep, beep. We are sorry, you have reached a number that has been disconnected. What are you doing? I whipped around. Dr. Marnin was standing in the doorway, his arms crossed over his white coat. I was digitizing the files like you told me to. I stuttered, slamming the phone down. Not those files. He violently grabbed the files from the desk, shoved them back into the file cabinet. Then he pulled a small key from his pocket and turned the locks on each drawer. Click, click, click. Finish this up, okay? I nodded. And then he was gone. The silence pressed in. The waiting room was empty and still. I checked the clock, 4.45. No more patients would be coming in. It was only Dr. Martin and me in the office now. So I did what any reasonable person would do. I shut down the computer, grabbed my coat, and started for the door. As I hurried towards the exit, I saw Dr. Martin at the end of the hall. He was opening a door, the door he told me went to the supply closet. But beyond him, I could see a set of stairs snaking down into the darkness. <laughs>